Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a shoe from Hoka that's kind of designed to do it all. It's the Hoka Solomar. Let's run with it. Now before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Now the Hoka Solmar is designed to be a versatile shoe, everything from lifestyle wear to walking to going to the gym and even all the way up to running. So it's designed to tackle a wide variety of tasks, which is a little bit unique compared to most Hoka shoes, which are primarily designed purely for running. And for a Hoka shoe, this is definitely a more minimal setup. We have 26 millimeters in the heel, 20 in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. This varies slightly from the rest of the Hoka line, as most Hokas have a four to five millimeter drop, while the new Solomar has a six millimeter drop. So I don't know if a millimeter makes a massive difference, but it is something to note. This is a neutral shoe and it weighs 8.5 ounces. Nothing crazy for a offering in this category. As far as the price goes, it costs $125, which is on the more budget side of things, being about $15 less than the Clifton. Moving on to the upper, we have what looks like a knit material. It is rather breathable and comfortable. There's a little bit of stretch and elasticity to it in the toe box region. However, through the midfoot, there is an internal midfoot cage. Essentially, they have some plastic overlays that are fused directly to the upper on the inside. It provides a very seamless, consistent feel. However, the midfoot section is non elastic at all, it does not stretch, which allows you to have a solid lockdown through that midfoot section with a little bit more comfort and elasticity in the toe box. The shoe fits true to size with regard to length. However, with width, it is a very narrow and slim experience, even for a Hoka. I did find the toe box to be a little bit cramped. I do wish they would widen it up just a bit. So maybe go up a half a size if you can, if you do want a little bit more wiggle room. But overall, I thought it was decently comfortable, maybe just a tad bit too snug. The tongue is well padded and non-gusseted. I do wish they would gusset the tongue as when I was in the gym, it did slide around a little bit. But other than that, it's a very familiar Hoka tongue. Well padded, very comfortable, and gives you a pretty consistent feel from top to bottom. Moving to the back of the shoe, we do have more low profile, more minimal heel counter than we typically see from Hoka. It's a rather flexible heel counter with an absolute ridiculous amount of padding in the Achilles area and a large elf ear pull tab that helps you get your foot in and out of the shoe. I thought that worked well. However, I will say I did have to use the runner's knot to get a secure lockdown. There was a little bit of heel lift with traditional lacing, but once I did the runner's knot and got a better secure fit with the laces, I was able to kind of feel locked into the shoe. But there is a little bit of heel lift with a more traditional setup. Moving to the midsole, it's still compression molded EVA foam. Hoka is very familiar with this material. They use it on most of their running shoes. And it also features a late stage meta rocker. Essentially, it's a less aggressive rocker. So the Rincon, Clifton, those have an early stage meta rocker. Those get you up on your toes a little bit faster, where this is a less aggressive rocker or otherwise known as a late stage meta rocker. As far as the midsole goes, it felt like a pared down Hoka experience or a more minimal setup compared to what we're used to from Hoka. It wasn't as soft or as plush as most other Hoka models. And I think that's okay. It still had a nice level of impact protection and cushioning to it. And the big reason for that is this is kind of an all around shoe where it tries to be a versatile jack of all trades. And you really don't want an ultra max cushion shoe if you're going to the gym and or training. So what does all of that mean? Well, I'll try to break it down by each activity and give you my thoughts as this is kind of, like I said before, a jack of all trades shoe. Starting with running, I thought it had a nice smooth flow to it, easy transitions. However, I think it works best for those shorter and faster runs, mainly because you don't have a whole lot to the midsole here. And if you're a fan of Hoka, you'll probably want that extra cushioning for those medium to long runs. So short, fast runs, it works pretty well. As far as using the Solomar in the gym, I think it does a decent job. Now it's not gonna replace your true gym shoe, but I think this does a better job than most traditional running shoes, mainly because the midsole isn't too soft and squishy and it's relatively stable. You don't have to worry about too much side to side motion. I thought the internal midfoot cage, which is connected directly to the upper, did a decent job. And the only major qualm I had was that the toe box is maybe a little bit too elastic. So I did get a little bit of sliding motion up there. And because it is a rather narrow shoe, I did get a little bit of spillage over the side of the midsole. But overall, for a gym shoe, it gets the job done. And like I said before, it's probably a better option than most other running shoes out there. It's not going to replace your true gym shoe, but it definitely works better than most other options. And the last area I want to talk about is walking in casual wear, mainly because I think that's where the Solomar shines the most. It has some nice premium materials. It doesn't look too crazy. Some people look at other Hoka's and they have those massive midsoles. It might be a little bit off-putting. Personally, I like those massive Hoka's, but this is a more traditional, more conventional 
conventional looking shoe. And I think some people who might not be on board with that ultra max looking style and aesthetic might be on board with this. It's also a very simplistic approach. You have a solid midsole, a well-built upper, a really well padded experience with the tongue, ankle, and Achilles area. And I think that is a big plus, especially when you compare it to some of the other um, competitors out there. I would probably prefer this with the more premium materials compared to those other budget shoes, which have kind of cheap firm midsoles and things like that. So it's a very comfortable walking shoe. It's a very pleasant experience. Uh, it's on the more minimal side things for a Hoka, but if you're someone who wants a nice kind of moderate level of cushion and something that looks more traditional and just kind of works well with a nice smooth flow to it, I think the Salomar performs well. Moving to the outsole, we do have strategic rubber in the forefoot and heel area. I do wish maybe they added a little bit more rubber coverage as weight isn't a massive concern for a shoe in this category. As far as the traction went, I thought it was fine. It's a more smooth experience, but on more conventional surfaces, I thought it got the job done. No major red flags. I would be careful if you're using this for kind of like trails or grass or anything like that, just because again, it is a more smooth platform, but for more conventional asphalt, concrete, whatever brick, um, I thought it did well. So overall, where does that leave us? Well, I think this is a decent jack of all trade shoe. If you want one shoe to kind of do it all, if you're going out on a trip and you only want to bring one set of shoes, I think this is a decent option. You can go to the gym in it and it performs decent. You can go running at those short to faster paces, boom, does a decent job. And then if you want to walk or use it casually, I think it really excels there. It kind of does a wide variety of things, unlike most running shoes, which really only kind of tackle the running and sometimes walking category. Now, my other only real qualms with this shoe is it's a very narrow experience. I do wish they would open it up, especially in the toe box. Uh, I wish they maybe add a little bit more structure through the toe box as well. So if you're in the gym or doing some side to side movements, you wouldn't have a little bit of spillage over the side. And I do wish maybe they give us maybe a little bit more robust heel counter for a better lockdown and fit. But overall, for people who want a more minimal, more slimmed down Hoka experience that again can tackle a wide variety of activities, it's not a bad option. So let me know down in the comments, do you think the Solomar and its use cases are something that's applicable to you and would you consider picking it up? Love to hear from you guys. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.